How to create warped type designs in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 220, but the same approach can be used with 2019s in most cases. First thing to do, create a new document for your type design. And go to the type tool, horizontal type tool in this case. Drag the type tool across the entire screen. Now, select the font you want to use, set the color, and set the font size. Right, unfortunately, of course, it's always a font that I don't particularly want, but I'm going to change the font now. So go for Arial Black. Unfortunately, with the lorem, etc., it only creates a couple of lines. So a copy. And go to the end and then append the type. Just paste it in again, again, again. So you can fill the entire screen with type. Go to a layer menu and merge layers. So that's now all one single layer. Go to the layers panel and there you can just click that little padlock there. Just click that and it will unlock the layer. Now the key menu panels there are via the window menu and that's layers and patterns. So edit and transform, and you can do scale, rotate, etc. But I'm going to go with warp. And you can just warp that, just drag those points, the corner points, as well as the lines. You can drag the actual line itself, as well as the actual document. I'm just using the corner points to create a sort of envelope design. So I'm sort of folding it in over itself. You can also go and right click and use the split crosswise. Now, if you've got earlier versions, you can't do that. That's a recent version, 2020. So split warp crosswise, position the crosswire. Now you can continue to position it, you can rotate those anchor points. So you can create all kinds of lovely warped designs. Once you're happy, press return. Now you've got that design, what you can do, you can select it and then use that as a definition for a pattern. But a better way of doing this is actually to undo that. And before you do anything with that layer, just let the move tool there, go to the layer menu and then smart objects and convert to smart object. The smart object is great because you can re-edit the warp at any point. You can also apply smart filters and they're all non-destructible. So edit and transform and warp again. Go to those corner points, drag inwards, fold the design in all kinds of ways. And just go to all of the corner points and drag them in. Up to you. I'm just going to create just an unusual warped design. And again, you can do exactly the same as before with the crosswise. 
Now you can split horizontally as well as vertically, as well as having both. And that's just great for distorting the design even more. Press return. Now you can always go to edit and transform and warp and just go back straight into it again so you can re-edit it. That's the great thing about smart objects. So if you decide, no, I want to change something, you can always go back to it and modify it. Again, drag a few points around. Press return. You can also apply effects. So filter and stylize and oil paint. Or maybe blurs and many, many more. And you can always remove them at any point as well. Deselect them. Now you can define that as a pattern. So go over to the rectangular marquee tool. Ah, does help to actually select outside of the uh, design. So once you've done that, then go to edit menu and define pattern or to the pattern panel and right side menu and new pattern preset. Give it a name, click OK. Again, you can do exactly the same again with the edit menu. Now it's defined as a pattern. It's a pattern tile. And you can go to another document. And what you can do is you can go to the edit menu and fill. And you can set the contents to pattern. Make certain you select the pattern that uh, you just created. And yep, just make certain, yeah, because quite often I end up doing it and then I suddenly think, hang on, that's the one that I've created earlier. Set the script. Now I'm going to go with a random fill. There's a number of other options as well. You can also set the blending mode. Click OK. If it works OK, a panel will appear. Then you can change the density, the scale factor, as well as rotate pattern and also color randomness. Click OK. Edit and fill and do exactly the same again because sometimes you'll find that the document doesn't fill the entire screen. So repeat. Just keep repeating it a couple of times and then you've got it filled the entire layer. And again, I've created some earlier, so I can just apply those as well. Click OK. You can see the design there. But now if you go back to the original document, what you can do is you can modify that. It's a smart object, so you can change it. So go to the layer pa layers panel. Go to that smart object thumbnail there. Double click on that. And you go into the document and you've got the text there again. Now you can modify that in numerous ways. You can fill it again. You can also transform it, apply transformations and all those sort of things. But I'm just going to actually go to edit and fill. I'm going to fill it with white. Click OK. Go to the type tool. Again, set the font, font size, etc. in the way that you want. But this time I'm just going to apply it to a small part of the image. And again, it only creates a little bit of uh, lorem. So copy and paste. Hold down the Alt and Option key or Option key and drag. So you can create a couple of copies of that type. 
put it on to the other side. Up to you where you want to position it. Go to the second one, and also you can just resize that, just quickly resize that. Press return. And you can change some of the type, of course, you can select the type. Just go to the type tool, select it. Maybe change the color, change it to red. Click OK. Press return. So layer menu, and then you can flatten the entire image. You don't have to do that, you just leave it. It's perfectly reasonable to keep it as layers. So it's flattened now, and you can apply effects to it. So um, maybe blurs, oil paint, my favorite. So Gaussian blur, so you can just blur it slightly. Click OK. So you can do all kinds of effects and also adjustments. Maybe apply warp, so distort and wave. Set the number of generators, change the amplitude, change the wavelength. Click the randomize button if you wish. Use wrap around the bottom. Click OK, and then you've got your warped design there. Now it's a PSP document, it's a smart object, so close that. Save it, and then it's saved, and then it will update the other document. In a few seconds. There it is. So it's been updated. You can now see the blur and everything else, the red type as well. So now you can go to edit and define pattern if you wish. Edit. Ah, oh, just going to do something else as well. Just gonna... for some weird reason I can't transform it. I do not know why. I'll remove the selection. So select and deselect because it's a layer. Should be modifiable at this point. Go to the move tool. Ah, now it's available. Edit and transform. And again, you can do scales, etc. But you can also go back to the warp again. And then you can drag that around to modify the warp. In all kinds of ways, you can also distort it in many other ways as well. Rotate it, scale, etc. And of course, you can turn that into a smart object as well, the warp, and then apply another warp to that, and so on and so on. So you can actually apply smart object warp, smart object warp, smart object warp to create all kinds of really weird warps. I know I always find sometimes with this is if, if you try and scale it, and it's probably best to do it via the edit menu, you try and scale it via the bounding box, it just doesn't let you do it. it does eventually, but it just stops, it just won't scale. Now, I'm not certain what I'm doing wrong, but it's just odd. But finally, it's, it's scaling. Yeah, there it is. And you can also rotate, of course. You can also go to layer style and drop shadow via the layer menu. So I'm going to add a drop shadow, but I could also add bevels, a gradient overlay, satin. Once you're happy with your shadow, click OK. Again, go to the Selection tool, Rectangle and Marquee tool in the Tools panel. Select the whole area. Edit Menu and Define Pattern. Click OK. There it 
then go to edit and fill again and just apply it. So again, go to contents, put that to pattern. Custom pattern, make certain you set the right one. Quite often I run it again and it's always with the old one. So select the new one you've just created. Make certain the script is on. Sometimes it seems to go and forget that it's doing a random fill. So it's always best to make certain it is. And there you have it. Set the density. Press return. And there's your warped, distorted design. And you can repeat this over and over again. It's a smart object. It can be changed over and over. So if you want to, you can edit that again using the smart object there. Tweak it again and then go back to the other document and apply it again. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. I'm always adding new tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator and many, many others. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Also, please add some comments. A dislike or like as well. Always appreciated. Thank you very much.